Oh no, that's a wolf. Please don't be mad at me. What, what, what's that you said? I'll never be a part of the analyst community? My videos are horrible. You hate my show? My videos are bad and I should feel bad for making them? No! Hey, I got you, hey. I got you, hey. I got you, hey. <sighs> oh, it's just a dream. Oh, hey, this is more like it. I've been accepted as an analyst. I'm hanging out. Just me, Ingros, and Silverquill, and... Hey, what are you doing? No, 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 don't do this! I, I do not ship this! How does this even get in my mind? No, you can't cheat on Firebrand! What are you two doing? Hey, I got you, hey. I got you, hey. I got you, hey. Ah! Oh, oh. It was just another dream. And if I can speak as myself for a moment, I just want to go on record saying that the dream imagery in this episode was really cool. Of the three times that this has been done, this is the one that most resembles my own dreams as often I have dreams where I believe I'm awake when I actually am not. Many times I dream that I've just woken up from having a dream, but I'm actually still dreaming. And many times in my dreams, my surroundings will look accurate to my real life surroundings while simultaneously being inaccurate in a way that I'm not immediately aware of. Looking at all the little details that happen in this episode, you can see the subtle hints of this still being a dream. And you can play this back over and over and enjoy those subtle changes. I'd say this is very close to the For Whom the Sweetie Bell Toils, which was a very enjoyable take on the Christmas Carol, with Apple Bloom's thing being a take on Groundhog's Day. It's hard for me to tell whether I like Christmas Carol or Groundhog's Day better, but I enjoy both of these a lot better than Studeloo's dream sequence, which I thought was too short to be truly enjoyed. As far as the starlight glimmer angle, as much as it would be cool for her to be the antagonist in this episode to show she's the returning villain and this is one of her evil plans, and I'm sure that's what the writers want us to think, logically it doesn't make sense. Why would Sunset Glimmer have the power to do dreamwalking just like Luna does? Why would she be repetitively influencing Apple Bloom's dream, especially Apple Bloom specifically? And how would she have found her way to Ponyville after leaving the yet unnamed town? It's little stuff that doesn't add up, and every little thing in this episode that just raises too many questions can actually be dismissed as chewed up to dream logic. Every flaw that is in this episode can be just dismissed as part of the dream, and that's what's good about it. Compare that to Sweetie Belle's dream where all of those foals at her birthday party were all being introduced to us for the first time, and did not in any way represent pre-established full characters, which confused me. The part of this episode that I found the most boring is the middle part, the second dream, where Apple Bloom finds her friends have rejected her. The most hilarious part of this is easily 
watching or listening to Big Mac's voice come out of every pony in Apple Bloom's family and not always coming out of Big Mac himself. And the little dad that they put at the end of her dream sequences where one of the cutie marks is Apple Bloom's face and it winks at her is extremely reminiscent of a fan art that I did some time ago. Although the two are not related and my fan art tells a completely different yet very similar story. There's also the issue of the pest pony and the Twitter mites. Are they real or are they just part of her imagination? And as I explained in my story, either possibility is possible and we won't know for sure until we see them outside of the dream. But here's the thing about the pest control pony is that he was one of the leads lead at the um, Brony conventions as a concept art. And because his concept art was on the same page as artwork of Rainbow Dash, it mixed things up mentally for us. And it made us think that this was going to be part of Rainbow Dash's episode where she would encounter this guy. The other thing Hasbro did is they used the Sweetie Belle dream sequence as a clip for promoting the series which made a lot of us jump to the conclusion that there was an entire episode dedicated to Sweetie Belle getting on stage, which is kind of disappointing that that didn't happen. But on the other hand, if that did happen, we would have a whole other fan drama unfold over whether or not Vinyl and Octavia would talk or not. I'm still waiting for a day when the two will be together in something that's not a dream sequence. That'll be their first in canon interaction. This goes to show you not to allow clips to overhype you and draw wrong conclusions. A few other things to note. I love the references to various things, like the Apple Bloom pest control pony segment to be interpreted as a reference to either Ghostbusters or Luigi's Mansion. Take your pick. The apple farm gets blown up and the fan reaction is what? Again? As opposed to the outrage and sadness that was felt from the loss of Twilight's library. I also love the fact that the destruction of the apple farm barn is a kind of reference to Independence Day. I love the fact that even though this is one of those things that we've seen before, seen before and seen before, the time loop plot is something that can be done here in My Little Pony and it actually works and I don't mind the fact that it's just an imitation of another unoriginal idea being used on the show. Anyhow, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching and good night. Hey, I got you, hey. I got you, hey. I got you, hey. <sighs> I dreamt I was human. I don't know what Lyra sees in those fins. I think that was the worst dream yet. <laughs>